Now that we have created the feed page or the timeline page and everything you've seen here is hard coded, it is time to start working with real data. For that, we need to configure a database in our app. Throughout this course, we are going to use an SQL database. So you need to make sure that you have installed the SQL server and you can either install the Express Edition or another version. To communicate with the database, we are going to use Entity Framework, which is an ORM or Object Relational Mapper for .NET. Additionally, we are going to use migrations to manage the database changes and migrations are essential as they allow us to evolve the database schema over time in a consistent and version controlled manner. In this part, we are going to create the database, get the connection string and store it in our app. So for that, let's go to Visual Studio. To create an empty database, you need to go to View and then go in here to Server Explorer. In here, you are going to see two options, the data connections and servers. To create a new database, you need to right click on the data connections and then go to create new SQL server database. And then in here, you need to choose a server name. Now, depending on the server that you have installed, so the SQL server that you have installed, you will need to use the SQL server instance name. Now, if you click in here, you are going to automatically get all the options, but if you don't get them, then the instance is going to be your PC name, followed by a slash and SQL server instance. In my case, I have the ETR and the ETR SQL server. So basically, if you don't get the options, you just go here, you get this name, which in your case is going to be different. And then you use that name, then slash, SQL Server Express, for example, if you install the SQL Server Express. So let me just go back here and I'm going to choose the SQL Server. And then I'll use the Windows authentication. As encryption, I'm going to set it to optional or false. I'm going to trust the server certificate. And then the database name is going to be Circle App DB, but you can use any name you want. Let me click OK. This is now going to create the database. And you can see that the database was created. If I expand, here we can see the tables, which we don't have any tables, we don't have any views, and we don't also have any stored procedures. Now to get the database connection string, you just need to right click in here, and then go to properties. And then you get in here the option. So under connection, you have the connection string. Just select Control A, Control C to copy this value. Now let us go to the Solution Explorer. And we have said that to store information like the database connection string or other information, we use the app settings.json file. Now in here you can either just use a key, let's say connection, and then just define the value or you can use the suggested name, which is the connection strings. Now this is going to be a section. So what this means is that inside here now you can define different keys and different values. For example, let's say you want to store in here different database connection strings, one the dev environment for sandbox or production. You can just define here different keys and then based on how you want to execute the app, choose which connection string to load. Now, since I have just one in here, I'm just going to type default. So this is going to be our default connection string. And the value is going to be the connection string that I just copied. Let us see the changes. Now, to make sure that the data is being loaded from here, we are going to navigate to the program.cs. And then just in here, I'm going to type, let's say, database configuration and of course the first step was to just create an empty database then I'll just type in here string db and to read the value from the app settings.json file we're going to use builder dot configuration and then dot get connection string and from the get connection string so basically from the connection strings section because this is what this method does it just goes and checks for the 
connection strings section and here we need to define which connection string we want to load and we need it default. Now to make sure that this is loading correctly, I can just put a breakpoint in here and then we can just run the app. So we reached the breakpoint. Now let us just move the mouse over the DB connection string and you can see that we have a value and the value is the one that we stored in the app settings.json file, which means that now we are ready to move to the next part where we are going to set up the entity framework.